Hey, good day. This is Greg Luss, city manager here in Lebanon. Welcome to Lebanon in Depth. Uh, we're very happy. I'm just very happy today. Uh, we begin our second show of the year. Um, we uh, we're looking forward to this year. This is an exciting year, and there's been a lot of good developments in our police department. And with me today, I have our 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 our, our police chief, and then we have our deputy police chief. And so um, I am just delighted to have them here today. Uh, Gary Smith and Phil Roberts are just a, a blessing for us here in our community to have them on board and willing to take on leadership positions. So I'm just going to open up, Gary. Um, I know last year you and I kind of got together and and you put the biggest smile on my face ever uh, by the fact you said, the, well, Greg, uh, I'll, I'll consider being the do this police chief th job thing. And, and at the time, you and I both are kind of from the same era uh, in many ways uh, in our lives, uh, being coming up through things like Vietnam War and Vietnam era, and and then coming into our respective professions and stuff. So we had a lot of common ground. And when you said you'd be willing to serve a little more tour of duty, it's kind of like the guys in Nam, where I just remember, well, you're going to extend your tour of duty. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, you are. Okay, let's do it. Yes. <laughs> let's do one more year. Um, so I was pleased you said that, but uh, why didn't you, Gary, you, you've been our deputy police chief, uh, and you, you've held about every job, I think, in the whole department. I have. Your right, career. Yeah. Why don't you uh, share with the public a little bit about how you got into the Lebanon Police Department, and, and then how you came up through here, kind of uh, uh, long story short. Long story short, uh, all my life I wanted to be a police officer. Uh, when I got out of the military in 1974, there were a lot of veterans getting into the business at the time, and uh, it wasn't so open. And I found other things to get involved with, and I uh, had my family and got involved with uh, different careers. I worked for a supermarket for many years in management, and I went to work uh, for a short time with the federal government and the post office. Uh, I, I found an opportunity at one point to become a police officer when I was 35 years old. Uh, Lebanon Police Department had an opening. Uh, we lived in Massachusetts at the time and uh, our children were very small and I saw it as an opportunity to uh, move to a smaller community, uh, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. uh, maybe better for our kids, you know. That's neat. Uh, so we took, we took the chance and I came up and tested, uh, that was 1987. Uh, again, long story short, here I am today. I worked my way through the ranks. Uh, I've, like you said, I've held pretty much every uh, position in the department at one time or another, some shorter, other, others longer. Yeah. And uh, I, I uh, worked for uh, several years with Jim Alexander as his deputy chief, as you mentioned, yeah. and uh, I, I'm proud to have this opportunity, Greg. Thank you. Well, well I'm, I'm proud that you're able to do this. I mean, I, I like it that we both kind of found our way here in life. We both, I really enjoy being a city manager, and you really enjoy being a police officer and a police leader. You, you very much enjoy being around your police officers, our force, and I very much enjoy to be around uh, people like you and the police force we have. And I, I really, I couldn't be prouder than to have be a city manager with our police department the way they are. So let's turn to Phil a little bit. Sure. Um, Phil, uh, you are now our new deputy police chief. I am. And uh, so let's, as you do, long story short, again, uh, tell us a little bit how you came into the Lebanon Police Department area and how you got up uh, and what were you doing and then during your time and then kind of now you're, you're how, what, how, do you, how do you feel about becoming our Deputy Police Chief? <clears throat> yeah, well, I'm from, uh, I was actually born in Lebanon, so. so I, you're, I, you're a native. I'm, you're a, a, I'm a, a native, native, although I, I live on the other side of the, of the river now. But uh, I grew up uh, right here in the Upper Valley and started my career as a police officer at the age of 19, uh, right out of high school uh, in the state of Vermont. And then uh, in the state of New Hampshire, you gotta be 21 to become full time. <clears throat> so as soon as I became 21, I uh, put in my application for the city of Lebanon because I knew I wanted to live here. I liked the area, I grew up here. I didn't want to go to a big you know, city or anything. Um, wanted to just stay here and, and have a family one day so uh, I applied um, got in uh, on my first try back in 2000 and quickly kind of uh, fell into some positions of promotion um, that worked for me I got promoted to corporal within two years and then sergeant four or five years after that 
In uh, 2007, I made lieutenant where I ran the patrol division for a while as a patrol lieutenant, and most recently I spent the last few years running the detective uh, division uh, with the felony cases. And this position came uh, open several months ago, and I gave it thought. Uh, I'd been there 14 years. I'm going to be there probably another 14 years, and I wanted to be able to get in a position to, you know, shape the future. That's really great, you know. And what I love about both of you um, is the fact that you have, you really understand our system because you came through it. And you know, I have uh, had, the, had the opportunity to be associated with quite a few police departments and sheriff's departments in my time as a manager. I was, you know, when I was in city attorney days, I was uh, attorney for the things like the Moorhead, Minnesota Police Department, which is very enjoyable for me to work with them out there. Uh, and then I was the attorney. I was the city city attorney. I had police departments also in uh, places like uh, uh, Lakeville, Minnesota, and so as a city attorney, I, I enjoyed very much uh, being the attorney for police departments. Uh, and then when I became manager, then of course my first managers were switching to um, the the county level, where I was county manager, and I got to work with county sheriffs, some very professional county sheriffs uh, that I worked with for a period of time for. Uh, altogether the 27 years and while being a county manager I and the sheriffs became partners with the police chiefs in the towns and cities in those counties. Uh, we, we got uh, relationships and so I've seen a lot of police forces at work and a lot of police chiefs at work and and I think I hold uh, none of them in higher esteem than I do Lebanon Police Department. Thank you. So I just compliment them and all our officers who are in, in the field. And I love it the fact we're building our leadership through our, our existing uh, ranks, those, those people are dedicated enough to stay with us. With I think that's going to be one of our continuing philosophies, is to build our department from within, to give everybody in our department opportunities for taking steps, to go and look and explore um, roles with us and different roles and leadership opportunities so that we we're all leaders in many ways, and, and I think we have a niche for every one of our officers to find their, their niche, where they, wh whatever they find best um, in terms of the life of a police officer. So I'm very pleased with our developments, the way we approach this whole thing. It kind of worked its way through. We went through national <coughs> searches. We saw everybody out there. We interviewed people. Uh, and we came home. <laughs> and so that's where we we're at. We're at home. And that's really nifty. Now, I think we should get into a little bit about what our police department is doing today, uh, what are issues that our department tackles, uh, and what, you know, kind of the ongoing um, challenges that we have and the opportunities we have as our police department, and kind of bring the, the public into a window into our police department as we are doing today. And after that, we'll talk a little bit about future and maybe where we're going. So. Gary, you want to start out and we'll sure. get Phil to, to kick in on some of the ideas of what we're doing right now? You know, challenges, uh, I think, uh, is the most important thing right now uh, that we're looking at is, uh, you know, we're that hub community uh, where people, that influx of people and the things that we deal with, uh, you know, every day, uh, the bulk of what we deal with are from people outside our community. Uh, which was interesting to me when I first moved here. Mm -hmm. It, is, it yeah. has never really changed. I've never been in a city like this before. All the other places I've been, you know, you'd have a metro area, and then with the population you were serving was fairly stable. Uh, you had some transient population, uh, but generally you were pretty much your whole population with people that live here. Right. Here we have a ch uh, we have a night a daytime population. We have a nighttime population. Yes, it's it's really um, something that I'm I'm yet to figure out exactly what the right paradigm is for that kind of uh, flow of, of human beings back and forth in a in a city. Yes, you know, it, it, I find uh, it seems like people are coming here uh, from further and further away, uh, you know, in a lot of cases to commit crime and, and go back to where they came from, which is again a huge challenge for us to resolve some of these things. Uh, we're working hard, um, you know, to, to um, you know, solve the crimes that are being committed, and I think we're doing a heck of a job half through the years. Uh, but we, we spent so much time on this sort of thing that, and our department is only so big. Uh, uh, we've kind of forgotten the neighborhoods. We've forgotten that that, that uh, you know that close 
uh, closeness that the police used to have years ago. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to regain that. And uh, as you know, our neighborhood initiative, uh, we're trying to get the officers out of the cars more to meet the people because the people are our eyes. You know, they can help us tremendously and have helped us tremendously in solving a lot of these crimes. Uh, they see things during the day and the, during the evening uh, that, that it would be impossible for us to see. They know things are out of yeah, out of sorts that, in their neighborhood. Yeah, I mean, and that's a real good approach, I think, uh, that you all are taking. Uh, we're, you know, as we try to get back into the neighborhoods, because I, I used to, th you know, one of the common rhymes was, you see something, say something. But if people don't yes. know somebody, they don't know quite who to say it to. And the comfortability of it to see something and say something, oh, I don't know how to say anything. It, it should come second nature. You see something, say something, and then uh, as these community policing, uh, as we develop and, and, and go, kind of go back to the future, yes. and, uh, and that will people's comfort level is, you know, that to say something to uh, an officer that's in the neighborhood, to say something anytime you see an officer. If you see something, say something, officer. Or, you know, whether we have special units where we have, you know, our, our bike units and then we'd have our, you know, our, our resource officers, the students saying something to them and somebody sees something to the bike people, say something to the patrol officer who's kind of checking out a particular corridor. As we got these corridors that just seem really challenging. I don't envy the officer's job in dealing with our corridors sometimes. It's just seems like we have a lot of traffic in at certain times and it seems pretty pretty rugged and yes then I've been noticing some of the stuff when we get some crime it it seems like it's almost like somebody comes off the interstate and does something and then gets back on and goes that's exactly what happens and I don't know if that's true or not now. It, it is true uh, and uh, you know we've got a heck of a bunch of guys uh, uh, in our department that are, are working hard like I say to get closer to people that can give us that information that can help us in that in that way. Um, you know, it's tough for people to, uh, a lot of people, I should say, yes. to approach officers. And that's something we've got, mm -hmm. to, we've got to overcome. We need to, mm -hmm. we need to keep reaching out and, and let people know, you know, we're the mm -hmm. same as everybody else. We're no different. Mm -hmm. Only, our job is different, is, is what Yeah, I, mean. I don't think there should be, we don't need barriers. Uh, for yes. your, Phil, how, how do you feel about this? this <laughs> Pretty you've much been doing the detective work. I yeah, think, I've been with the, with off the road unit and the for a few order. years. Uh, what you and the chief were just discussing about the outside population, I would, I would venture to guess that it's 70 or 80 percent of our crime that occurs up and down the 12A corridor is out of state, out of Lebanon. So that does tie up our resources. But um, my big thing when I interviewed for this job was uh, what I've been seeing over the last handful of years is all the technology that we have now uh, that's standard in the police service. Uh, from the computers and the cars and the radios and everything doesn't make the officer get out as much as they used to and I think uh, it's it's like the chief said we've got to start getting out because before we had all that stuff I saw I see the difference of when I was out you know 10 years ago in the neighborhoods uh, walking on Main Street and talking to the business owners as they leave uh, you know uh, it makes a big difference and they're more apt to say something if they see you two or three times a week and they're they're comfortable with you Not everyone's comfortable walking up to a squad car with, with all yeah. those gadgets yeah. that they mm -hmm. see and, and the, uh, mm -hmm. You know a mysterious officer in this intimidating uniform to them if they're not used to it So if you get out you have that contact people become more open to, to share info with yeah. you or their it feels issues. more natural natural right. and because because that's when I just working with a lot of groups of people you know, the place in which you can do the engagement where you actually interface with people. Because I like in those city halls, sometimes I, I feel like it gets a little courtroomy, feels a little atmospherics that, you know, there are the judges and here's the, you know, you have to be. But that's why I've been liking the walkabouts. Yes. Where I can walk about a neighborhood put on, on a city topic and so somebody can come out and walk with us, uh, and that's pretty human, walking with somebody down the street. Or they come out on the lawn and chat us up and, and, and share what, what they, their perspective on whatever the particular topic is on the walkabouts. So I like that. And I also like going out into um, to neighborhood spaces that people might feel comfortable in being in, you know, whether it's a farmer's market space or whether it's a, in a community room in a library, well, that seems non-threatening. That, that there's not a lot of uh, barriers in the, in the community room over there at the Kilton, um, you know. And, and then sometimes just go into some of the motels. The hotels, 
where I'd go into some of their broader um, meeting rooms and just kind of keep it fairly bare and have some tables by which people can walk around and look at exhibits and talk to people. So the principles of, of, of people being able to have comfort level of, of having officers on the street or on a bike or, or in, in a situation where, where our school, down school hallway, uh, anytime we can do that, or I know Chief, you've come to our walkabouts and you've come to our community meetings and, and uh, I look forward to Phil being there likewise. And I think that even if it's not a police business, you know, if they see you at any of these events, as, as they do now, um, they, they sit through the familiarity thing, like you were saying, yes. Phil. Uh, yes, it's something you're comfortable with and you don't yeah. feel a barrier between It people. makes it a lot easier. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I got I to tell you, Greg, it's a little off subject, but uh, uh -huh. you know, your Citizens Academy, as you mentioned, I've been. That to, was fun. The police I department is yes. well job. Uh, yeah, everyone that participated as well. Yes. The, um, the walkabouts, the contacts that I've had with people through those, through those uh, functions have been have been tremendous. Mm -hmm. uh, I've I've enjoyed it. I don't know how the people mm -hmm. feel, but I've enjoyed the. We've been really getting good good feedback from them you know pe people have said this verbally and, and sometimes they'll fill out a survey or something and let us know how they think and you know the lab alert system the ask lab system these are technology -ish areas but but I, we want to combine our use of technology with a personal connection so we do both we make it because some of my you know my my three children now 20 somethings or 130 now um, they're really adept at the smartphones, you know, and the, and the pads and all that. They just pull it up and start doing this stuff. And, and uh, so we need to have that available for them for sure, but we also need the personal contact because I think the personal relationship means a lot. Yes. Um, a lot to people. Um, other things that are, we should mention, the uh, current police department operations that, that, that we should bring home to the public? Well, I think it's important to know that, uh, you know, we're working to fill our positions now uh, with my promotion and uh, Phil's promotion to deputy chief. Uh, we, have, we have some vacancies that we need to, to backfill. Uh, we've got some great people. I'm not concerned over it. The, the tough yes, part is picking yeah. who, who's gonna fill those positions. Oh yeah, I, mean, I, think it's, I think it's a good place to work and I hope, uh, you know, and I think the recognition of that is, is, is good and we'll get, we'll get people willing to come in. Because I like our different situations where our captains and our lieutenants and our sergeants, you know, having been a sergeant type, um, myself, and, you know, how important sergeants are, yes. and, our, and so our captains, lieutenants, and sergeants, and then are just our officers, our, and especially our new people. I, you know, I always, always like a little mix of, you know, people that, you know, uh, really want to come and have that enthusiasm, and they, you know, they'll go through the whole experience of like we all go through. Yeah, we've been pretty lucky with maintaining uh, personnel over the years. We've got, you know, uh, a huge amount of people that have been here for long periods of time. Uh, in the past, uh, you know, the economy was more lucrative. Uh, you know, officers were moving around a lot. Uh, uh, since uh, again, and I don't want to, you know, yeah. pump Jimmy Alexander up, but uh, mm -hmm. since he took over as chief, things, uh, you know, uh, was kind of settled down, and we we maintained uh, personnel for a lot of years. So yeah. we've, uh, we've got a lot of experience now, <laughs> and and we're getting some new people in as well. Yeah. Uh, you know, through attrition, and it's 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 awesome. It's I, I think it, the department's great. I do. It is. I've been getting a lot of positive comments about how well we manage in the police department, the 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 technology now because the technology is is both voice and data. It's our communication center, and then like you were saying, Phil, our our vehicles are virtual uh, computers themselves because right. there's so much technology in our in our in our squad cars. On one hand, that's intimidating, like you said. On the other hand, we have some really wonderful tools, and, and the police department has been one of the best, the, not probably the best, in dealing with uh, the management of the technology and, and deployment in the purpose of mission of the police department. That, uh, are, so that, that's a real kudos to all the people that are involved in managing that sector uh, in, our, in our squads and in our uh, communication center with our dispatchers. Yes. And so that's that's a pretty nifty thing for us. Absolutely. Real strength. Uh, um, we ought to talk a little bit about uh, kind of the future here, maybe the short term and maybe the long term. You know, the short term is usually, you know, the next year ahead, so we got 2014, well, yeah, we're beginning a year. Uh, we did a, get approval of the police department budget as 
as recommended and as submitted without change. So we're happy about that. And we're going to put in new consoles. In the uh, dispatch. In, yes. in the dispatch area. Yes. Which is a nifty thing because uh, maybe a little bit about why we're doing that. And, and we're, we're moving forward on changing on our consoles. Well, you know, I think that not only will the system be more efficient, the important part mm -hmm. is that the, the, the equipment that we had, uh, well, computer equipment in general, ages so quickly, as you know, mm -hmm. becomes antiquated in a matter of uh, years. It changes fast. Yes. Uh, it, I believe the life expectancy of the equipment that we had was 10 years, mm -hmm. and we're just we're there. And, uh, there's so many changes that have occurred through the years. Uh, we have massive amounts of equipment that now can be, I mean, literally uh, shrunk down to the size of a, 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 you know, of a regular computer. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, Amazing. Yeah, we have towers that uh, will go away. Uh, you know, cards they call them, the electronic cards. That, uh, so actually you know, we have less space being utilized, huh? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. With the new, yeah. new models that yes. are coming up? Yes, yes. Uh, so again, it will, it will obviously uh, take away or give us back a lot of space. Yeah, yeah. Uh, at the same time, uh, create a more efficient uh, system for us. And bring us up to date. Uh, you know, the, the technology is tremendous. That's, uh, well, I, yeah. the... Um, in terms of uh, other developments in 2014, in our in in, in, in that we, we kind of have in our lineup this year, I, I think uh, you know again uh, our program uh, to get back into the uh, the neighborhoods is is really something that we're going to focus on. We have to adjust to the change uh, with me coming becoming chief. Um, so it's it's a matter now of uh, together developing a program that'll work for the community as well as us. So we'll be doing a lot of forums, uh, you know, to try to reach out to the public to see what it is they want. That, that's gonna be nifty. You know, I know when you sent me this card you developed, that, like the robbery card, and, and like one of your officers came over and provided training into City Hall yes. a while back yes. uh, about how to behave in, in, in situations you, that might uh, unfortunately come up. Uh, and I just, you know, those use of cards saying here's certain kinds of things because most of us never ever had that happen to us. And when it happens to us, it's kind of like, where, do, what do we do? Where do we go with this? I mean, how do I behave? Am I, am I a hero now, or am I, you know, what am I supposed to be doing? You yeah. know, oh, so, so those are kind of interesting things where you, where you put out some of this information with citizens, with employees of the city hall, uh, with other employees. I know banks, you've helped them and. Um, in terms of their employees, but just any, any kind of things you're doing. And then you put it in these little carts, which is pretty cool. We're, we're trying again, you know, to come up with different ideas to make mm -hmm. the public uh, uh, not only more aware, more yeah. educated, but uh, again, more comfortable with us, you know. Um, it's, it's, it's something that we will continue to do. It's something yeah. that we'll work hard to get yeah. accomplished. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the, uh, once again, the, the entire department's bought into it, so that's 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 nice it's, and yeah and one of your canines retired cody is retired yes and then another uh, and then another canine has come on board briggs so now we have we go back to our two canine yes and our, our we have two we have uh officer and, and their and their canine in our and our canine that unit's been a, a huge benefit to us i know i've seen it uh, you know i've seen it in some demonstrations by the canines and i and i, I think that's a wow factor um, there's so many, some th a lot of different things, and I think that the presence of the bike officers is, is a very interesting thing. Been a great, again, a, a great uh, unit to uh, reach out to the public. Much closer on the bike, you know. Yeah. You don't expect to see uh, an officer coming up on a bike. Well, with the idea that, that there's supposed to be a multimodal system in the in the community where you have places for people to walk, maybe more connectivity and walking and then maybe more connectivity on the biking as we work on trying to figure out things. I, I know I was at a meeting yesterday with a topic brought up, but there's been a study done by some Dartmouth students on our behalf on a bike share arrangement. Yes. Yep. So if you see more people on bikes and stuff like that. And and then this, this constant problem with the traffic, where the traffic bollocks up. And um, we, we were trying to figure out some solutions. We, we had a good conversation about ride share yesterday because uh, it's just if we could reduce the number of vehicles uh, on this, on our, our corridors and especially at our at those junctures where things just kind of can just bog down at certain times yes um, that that would be very helpful 
and, and so it's interesting all the quandaries about public safety you know on our streets and in and, and, and vehicles seem quite that was such a I sometimes somebody said weapon you know vehicles are a deadly weapon because they have so much capacity for doing damage yeah. and uh, I know our officers out there trying to I probably an unpopular thing is is our patrols trying to keep the uh, people in compliance and and and, and, and to, uh, kind of a, the pattern of behaviors that are safe and uh, on our streets. You know, when I when I came here, uh, Route Twelve A was the nightmare. Uh, we had many, many, many complaints about Route Twelve A. Uh, those complaints have well, we still get some. It's a busy place down there, uh, but. Uh, you know, the, the complaints have dropped off as compared to the 120 mm -hmm. corridor now. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we get many frustrated motorists with the traffic out there, and, and we're constantly trying to keep up with uh, the complaints and dealing with them. And, uh, it's like a perfect storm sometimes, where yes. all the migration of the employees who are coming into the area for work purposes are coming from quite a few distances, and they come in off the interstate, and then they just bog right down into, the, into our uh, series of lights. And how and and that certain things happen at certain times, yeah. and they seem to be some perfect co collation of these happening at once. Whether you're going into high school to drop off your student, or whether you're going to work, or whether you're going to the hospital, um, or whether you're going be, if they're moving back and forth between Hanover and Lebanon, um, and it's you know a, a a connectivity thing that that you you really have to be concerned about for our, for our transportation planning for us and then for you. Uh, enforcement and trying to trying to help the situation. Are there areas now in the future that we should be looking at from either your or Phil's your perspective? Anything, Phil, that you think it's it's kind of as you get your feet wet, uh, you're looking at probably a whole lot of things. I know I have whole things running through my mind if I were in your situation, but just some thoughts you have on uh, future things that we you know that's, that's out there in the police world. Uh, we'll see, either good or bad, I guess. <laughs> we'll, see, we'll see good or bad, probably. Well, uh, as you know from the news and the reports, we, we do seem to be getting busier. Um, we've, we've had our first bank robbery, I think, in a dozen years yeah, uh, in the last couple of months, which could be scary to some. So at the same time as we're focusing on getting back into communities and out of the car, um, we still have to have that enforcement and, and that... Uh, proactive approach to our jobs too and try to prevent some of these things from happening like the bank robberies and, yeah. and all the thefts that come uh, with the drug issues that we're mm -hmm. seeing that every community around us is dealing with. So just trying to balance those out at the same time and uh, you know just kind of uh, get my feet wet in this new position and uh, learn on the fly. Well yeah and I, I, I look forward as you, as you join chief uh, and work at this together, Gary. Uh, I often wonder about, <clears throat> we used to have this thing and when I lived in, as a city attorney out in Minnesota and Moorhead and Fargo area, the interstate that was out there came from Texas right up into Canada. And so there was quite a stream of people coming up through that area. Yes. And it was a law enforcement thinking and planning at the time that that was really like a, it's just a conduit. Uh, for, for persons coming into the United States for, through Texas and then out through Canada or vice versa. And uh, here we're kind of, here we're, you know, as I was, we, as I rode the Dartmouth coach to, to New York City the last weekend here to take in the NBA basketball game, but I, I was mentioning it before we got on the air, is that I watched how easy it was to go, uh, relatively easy to go from um, here um, down to New York City. And I hadn't ridden a bus ever from here down there. Usually if I was going to New York City in my past, I haven't been there recently, but uh, I'd probably be you know, flying in or something. But riding a bus, it just seemed very apparent how easy it was to move from here. And then you know, my wife and I took a trip up to Quebec City uh, because we had heard there was an ancient old city of interest, and so you went up there. It was very easy to get to get into Quebec, and so it seems like a very straight shot kind of deal between. Two. And then Montreal is on the other side, and we've been in Montreal too, yep. and so we have metro areas and and and, and certainly a diverse population on both ends, and we're right in the middle. 
Absolutely. And so it's an interesting yeah. thing about what that means to us from, uh, you know, from our demographics and statistics and whether there's patterns to this or not or whether it's just sporadic or it, it, it is an interesting flow. I know they were doing some real analysis in the Midwest on that on the interstate that, that was connecting and it was 20, I believe it was 25, I can't remember, I-25 I think, um, that went down to Texas and went to Canada and dropped off in Minnesota. It was an interesting pattern. You know, when I first came here, uh, you know, it was commonly called a flatlander. Oh. You don't hear that much anymore because uh -huh. that corridor that, that people have been traveling through, uh, the hospital came to Lebanon, uh, obviously brought a, a lot of employees from different areas, and people are from all over now here. You, you, you know, it's rare to find somebody that's, that's actually grown up in the area, you know? It it's is, a, it is a, diver a diversifying population. Now, our last minute, our last few, probably last 30 seconds or so, um, if uh, we wanted to provide or share some advice uh, to citizens how best to work with their police department, uh, and I guess vice versa, how best we should work with them, what would the advice be, Gary, in your thinking? Don't hesitate to call us. Don't hesitate to talk to our officers. Uh, we're, we're there for you. It's what we do. Uh, it, it helps us if we can uh, get the information that you may have. It doesn't hurt us if you have information that isn't very important, but just to take uh, a, a few minutes to meet an officer and talk to him, you may be helping out tremendously. Uh, and uh, once again, our officers are happy to talk to anybody that wants to talk for a few minutes at any time. Well, we'll leave that the note today, you know. I hope all you in the community get a feel from when we talk with Gary and Phil that our force, while it's there to serve and protect you, is also there uh, to have, you know, to, to really respect and listen to you and that uh, do follow the advice the chief has provided you about to feel comfortable in talking to our officers, uh, Gary and, and Phil in their leadership positions, but any of our officers. Um, they're, they're, they're the kind of people that you, you know, we, you should feel that boy, they, they're right in your corner. They'll, they'll help you, they'll, they'll process things. They, collectively, they have a lot of experience and wisdom and, and, and they can figure it out. All you need to do is to communicate with them and, and they'll communicate with you. And, and we're trying to take the truck forward, so we're putting it, we're once again putting our hands out in the neighborhood for neighborhood policing and building relationships between our police and our community. Thank you today. Uh, look forward to here, 2014. Um, I am very excited about the year and uh, it'll be the best one we, we've had in Lebanon, I am sure. And um, look forward to everyone, and uh, be safe out there. And drive carefully, and don't speed. Take care of yourselves. Bye.